What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Professor Layton in the Curious Village Blind. In the last episode, we played quite a bit of chess as we walked around town, chatting with people, trying to figure out just what exactly is going on with the Baron, and who were some of his close friends, and how can we get our hands on this note that supposedly will lead us to the Golden Apple. I did mention I was curious about um, Flicker. Was there not a, a coin up here? Did our Robo Pupper? No, okay, I was gonna say, there's no way Robo Pupper left a, or led us astray. Is. or is Flicker? Why do I keep saying Flicker? Why? Is Flick gonna have another puzzle for us? Okay, you two, we've had some good times together, but this is the last puzzle I've got for you. But don't be sad because I'm about to drop a beast of a puzzle on you. I guarantee you won't be able to guess your way out of this one. So, are you ready? Oh, I'm so excited. Number 83, too many queens for 80 picarettes! An 80 picarette puzzle! Wow! All right, this is a true beast of a puzzle. In chess, the queen can move, yada yada. You have three queens positioned on an eight by eight chessboard. Place the remaining five so that no piece blocks another's line of movement. Yeah, it's an eight, this is a tough one. Yeah, no kidding, it's an 80 pick rat puzzle. Wow, okay, so at first glance, what I wanna do is look at the rows and see how they are restricted. Right, um, for example, in the top row, can I draw? I can't, okay, well, top row moving from right to left. The first five tiles are restricted by the queens already placed. So we only have the, the far left three in order to, to place. Um, it's also worth noting we have what, an eight by eight chessboard, this is an actual chessboard, <laughs> um, an eight by eight. And we need to place five, and we can't place it in three of the rows. So we have to place one in each row. Um, we obviously can't place one in any of the rows already used. And it looks like, for example, in the third row, there are only two tiles, the two white tiles on the left that we could actually use. So our options would be these two in this row and in our top top row it would only be the three on the far left now let's look at some of the bottom rows in the third row from the bottom the the far left brown tile is free but the next is not those three are not that's not that's not so it's only the far left or the far right I wish I could draw I'm shocked they won't let me draw. But these are the only tiles available in this row. And I think those are going to be the most restricted rows. Because if we look at the next one, um, it's going to have quite a few spots available. It's going to have, well, it's going to have the second white tile from the left. It's going to have the third white tile from the left, and then the brown tile on the far right. So quite a few. So I think our best bet is trying to figure out, of the rows we've marked so far, the potential spots, what's gonna make the most sense? Because we can't have something that will remove all other possibilities for the other rows. So like, for example, let's imagine where we want to put this queen in the top row. It has to be one of these three tiles on the left. I can't put it here because then I remove my only two possibilities in the third row. So it's not that. It's got to be one of these two on the far left. So which of the two is it? Well, again, it's not on the far left because it's going to remove both possibilities in the third row. So this queen actually has to be here. We know that. Does that help us? Well, it doesn't get rid of any of the, the spots in the third row, and it doesn't get rid of any of the spots in the third row from the bottom as well. However, now we can start to consider, what about in the third row? We have these two spots. Do any of them eliminate certain choices, right? Um, 
and just to note to myself, I guess, I'm gonna write down um, top, because I'm gonna use the queen pieces to mark like I have been, because I can't draw. <laughs> um, top, left, brown, okay. So we know where one of them is going to be placed. Now, when we look at the third row, we can't really reduce those options much further. But if we look at the, the second row from the bottom, which spaces are available? It's not this one, not this one, possibly this one, right? And it's also not this one, possibly this one, not this one, not this one, and possibly this one. So again, it's this one, this one, or this one. Are there any options from above that rule out those, right? So for example, if um, I were to choose this queen here on the right for the third row from the top, what happens next? Well, I can't actually reduce a lot, right? Um, I only eliminate one option from the second row from the bottom. However, if I choose this queen on the left in the third row, what happens? Well, that eliminates this option, meaning this queen from the third row in the third row from the bottom would have to be this one. And what does that mean? Well, it means that this queen would have to go here because the only other option, this one, would be eliminated by this queen up here, and this option over here would be eliminated by this queen. So this would have to go here. And if that were the case, I think we're actually gonna see our solution now. Um, where could this queen go in the bottom row? Right? It couldn't go here. It couldn't go here, here, or here. Could it go here? Yes. Could it go here? No. Here, no. Here, no. So it would have to go here, actually. And I think that's going to be our solution. This. We've placed all five queens. And just to check, right? Um, this queen here. Nothing in the diagonals, nothing in the row, nothing in the column. This queen here, nothing in the column, nothing in the row, nothing in the diagonals. This queen here, nothing in the row, nothing in the column, nothing in the diagonals. This queen, nothing in the row, nothing in the column, nothing in the diagonals. This queen, nothing in the row, nothing in the column, nothing in the diagonals. And then looking at the fixed pieces, nothing in the row, column, or the Diagonals, row, column, diagonals, row, column, diagonals. I think we did it, guys. I think we did it. Well, here's my guess. Let's go. Let's go. Apprentice saves the day. 80 pick rats. Let's go. You got it. Since three queens were already in place, there's only one possible solution. That was really cool. <laughs> that was really cool. I like that problem. Check and mate, you've done it. I knew you two were chess masters under it all. I was sure from our very first match. So we got ourselves another painting scrap. Lovely, so at this point we should have a decent number of those painting scraps, shouldn't we? Yeah, given two are already on the, the painting, we're only missing a few, a few more. So I'll still hold off and wait for a few more of those puzzle pieces. But, wow, that's uh, that's pretty cool. Does Crouton have anything more for us? Fresh out of puzzles right now. Care to sample the soup? No, nah, I'm good, I'm good. We'll head on out. Um, let's see if we can head over towards the park and find anything that way. Because again, we are just asking around town. Doesn't seem like there's anything in particular over here. Because again, we are asking around town. We're supposed to be talking to people. So we'll head back here. Can we go in here? Nope. Um, we could potentially go in here. Well, let's get our hint coin first. Um, Mr. Mr. Document Man, do you have anything for us? If you don't have a form to file or further business here, I strongly advise that you scram. Woof. And no need to be, uh, no need to sugarcoat it, right? <laughs> wow. All right, so we'll head back this way and see what, um, oh, what's his name? Stash and Scarfin? <laughs> has to say. If you really want to understand St. Mysterio, you'll need to search the village thoroughly. Good luck, fellows. You'll need it. 
thoroughly. All right, well, we'll head into the inn. Oh, and our friend isn't here. Hmm, smell bread baking back there. Can we go back there? I want to go back there. Um, okay. Well, I guess we'll head out then. Nobody there to uh, entertain us. We can go even further back towards the bridge. Anything of interest here? Something with the car again? Not even the late mobile can make it across the river, huh? But of course, much as I adore the contraption, it is just a car after all. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Alright. Then we'll head towards the right. And see what more is in store for us that way. See if Marco has anything to say for us now. Lady Dahlia sure is gorgeous. Yep, that's the same thing he usually said. Okay. Um, we could go into the general store, although I don't anticipate really finding much. Um, just because we've already gotten one of the puzzles in here. So I don't think... Again, we're, we're trying to ask around town, right? Another one? Wow, Robopopper is just showing us where all the hint coins are. Where else could we go? I mean, we could ask the people in the mansion. It's not a bad guess. So, I mean, might as well, right? Let's see what Inspector Chelmy has to say. You needn't worry, I assure you I will find Simon's killer myself. For now, just let me do my job and get back to that search. Alright, Lady Dahlia. Anything new for us? I'd like to be left alone for a little while. I need some time. Okay. Gordon, any more, uh, any more help with your bachelor problems? Oh dear, I'm stumped again, and I just know I'll never find a bride of my own if I don't solve this puzzle. I'll spend my golden years alone with only the smell of cats and ribbon candy to keep me company. I beseech you, Professor, help me solve this puzzle. <laughs> I love the way he describes his, his bachelor problems. It's so funny. Wood cutouts. Okay. You have a single sheet of balsa wood, as shown in the diagram below. Your job is to cut the wood along the dotted line so that you end up with four identical pieces. The pieces may face different directions, but they must not be mirrored versions of each other. Does that mean they can be rotated, but not, like, flipped over? I think so. Can I move it in mul Okay, I can do this in different directions. Can I make multiple cuts? I can. Okay, so I need to make four identical pieces that can't be mirrored. Interesting, because of the, the curvature. I think what's most tempting is to initially do something like this, right? But at the end of the day, these are mirrored versions. They must not be mirrored versions of each other. They may face different directions that can't be mirrored. Two of these would be the same. You'd form two pairs of the same, but but altogether they would not be identical because they would be mirrored. Um, so could we can we use this to inform our decision or how we cut things a little bit? Um, hmm. How do we want to cut this so that we make four identical pieces? I feel like we're going to need to do some clever carving around the center. Oh, I see it. I totally see it. Um, yeah, so the, the main thing that I saw is that you need to utilize this curvature around like the center of the H, but you need to recreate that curvature even on the straight parts that don't have an obvious curve. So what you want to do is something like this. And there, I believe we've created four identical pieces. Let me see how big they are just to be safe. So, it's one, two, three, four, five, six across. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then, of course, two deep on the sides. Yeah, I think this is it. And they don't require any mirroring. They can just be rotated. There we go. All right. Critical thinking is the key to success. That's right. Once you got the shape of the pieces, it wasn't so difficult. But it wasn't all that easy to find them within the wood, was it? 
Oh, happy day. With that puzzle out of the way, I'm confident that no woman will be able to resist me. <laughs> I'll be bidding my loneliness goodbye before I know it. Uh, much like you said the last time we helped you with your puzzle. Okay, so, do you have anything more to say, Gordon? No? We'll take that hint coin, I guess. Any more difficulties? <laughs> Would you please let me know of any eligible bachelorettes you might meet in your travels? Of course, of course. Okay, so we've we've asked everyone in the household. Um, I'm not seeing a whole lot more. We could try... Who else could we try talking to? Hmm. I mean, we could try talking to Granny Riddleton. I don't think she's really relevant to the story, but we can try. Why, howdy! Do you often find yourself hopelessly ach achingly yada yada yada? If the cottage is empty, it means that you've solved all the puzzles available. Okay. Don't they generally tell you at the end of a chapter when puzzles have been added? Hmm. So... That's pretty interesting. Um, we'll talk to you again, see if you have any more puzzles for us, but still. Adria's really nice, but she comes up with some tough puzzles. Okay. We can maybe go in the cafe and see if anyone's in here now? No? Well, I feel like we've done... We've done plenty of asking around town. I can't think of anybody we haven't talked to yet. Oh! Ahem, you there! Yes, you! Do you mean me, good sir? Yep, you. This flower vase is yours, right? I've been keeping it nice and safe for you. Huh? Well, it looks like a very nice vase, but I can't recall ever... ...claiming it. I've never seen anyone just forget something like this while shopping. You're a vase space case. Interesting. And you can see off in the on the top screen, there's somebody watching from the distance. And this vase suggests that there's an imposter Leighton going around. I'm sorry, but you must be mistaken. I've never seen that vase before in my life. What? This fancy vase doesn't belong to you? So why'd that guy tell me to give this to you? Hmm? What does this man look like? Well, my hat was a way of obscuring certain details from me. Or has a way of doing that. Um, it's the worst, I tell you. <laughs> That's funny. But back to the issue at hand. The mystery man wasn't a regular around here, that's for sure. Don't sweat it, though. I'll just give it back to the guy next time. So, speaking of flower vases, I know a puzzle I bet you'll like. Huh. Why did he try to have this vase given to us? Is it going to sicken us so that we can be replaced with a robot? Is it so that we can be kidnapped? Or is it somebody trying to, from the shadows, help us out and give us a hint? I don't, I don't know. It seems more sinister than helpful, but nevertheless... Um, we'll see. It's not a hard one or anything, but it's the least I can do for bothering you about the vase. I guess that was the asking around the village we needed to do. So, the shattered vase. Ten picarettes. Wow, it's been a long time since we've had a ten picarette puzzle. Someone knocked over this fabulous vase and shattered it, fit the pieces together and restore the vase. Okay. Um, mixed in is a single piece from a different vase. Okay. So, first thing we can do is definitely this. Um, and then I think something else that'll be helpful is establishing the base there. Um, then there's also the, the curvature of the different segments. That'll be helpful. Um, we can use this for that segment there, and then here. Okay. <laughs> that was certainly a 10 pick red puzzle. Here's my answer. I was going to say, watch me get it wrong. Critical but thinking interesting. Is the key to success. It seems that the villain we're after is aware of our presence trying to investigate them. Good job. Repairing the vase wasn't much of a challenge, was it? <laughs> You've got a good head on your shoulders. I'm impressed. By the way, you sure you don't want to take some fresh sausage, sausage home with you? Believe me, these are some links you don't want to be missing. <laughs> no, thank you. We're just fine. Too bad. Not to bust your chops or anything, but that deal was a one-time offer. Maybe you'd have said yes if you knew, that, knew what was at stake. <laughs> I love his puns. I think we're done here, Luke. I couldn't agree more, Professor. <laughs> Luke's like, I've had it. I'm sick of your puns. Hmm. Also, it's worth noting, 
Um, something pretty cool. We've solved 83 puzzles, and I think we've done quite a few from these early numbers, right? Like, there aren't a whole lot missing. Which is nice. Um, just seeing, like, the continuity of it all, right? Um, we've obviously done quite a few from the 100 plus region. And there, so there's some missing from in here, like in the 70s and like 68. But we've done, I think, oh, and, and 55. So there's some around here. They're probably just villagers that we haven't talked to enough times. But yeah, I like seeing the sort of completion aspect of it. I don't know, does it give any indication as to how many puzzles there are in total? Probably not. I would hope not. Okay, it doesn't. Alright. Um, back to the game. What's this on the ground? What kind of lout just throws trash on the ground? I'm gonna pick it up. It's an old newspaper. Honestly, you'd think that everyone would know that trash goes in the trap. Wait a second, you have to come take a look at this article. Well, would you look at that? It seems to be Inspector Chelmy. <laughs> look at that. Chelmy hailed as brilliant detective and devoted husband. What does it say? What does it show? Chelmy hailed as brilliant detective and devoted husband. Chelmy celebrates each successful case with his favorite treat, his wife's sweet potato fritters. I get the impression she's probably not around anymore. Wow, who saw that one coming? He's so gruff that I never imagined he had a soft side like that. Just look at that old grump grinning over his plate of sweet potato fritters. I knew he was fussing over nothing when he said that he hated sweets back at Reinhold Manor. Hmm. That's right, Luke. He did say that. How very curious. Yeah, I get the impression she passed away, and it's because she passed away that he no longer wants to have sweets of any sort. But regardless, who are you? You magically appeared in front of us. So, is it true what I'm hearing about the two of you? Are you really running about town in search of the Reinhold fortune? That's correct, sir. Currently, we're in search of a close friend of Baron Reinhold's. We believe he has entrusted this friend with an important note. <laughs> Why are you telling people that? Gracious, that's quite a search you have on your hands. Oh, excuse me, my name is Archibald. Gus, I mean, the Baron and I were great friends. Thick as thieves. We used to have the most amazing conversations late into the night. Do you think that perhaps I'm the one you're searching for? <laughs> Yes, I think so. What luck that after all the searching we should bump into you in a place like this. I have one question. Do you recall ever receiving a small note or written message from the Baron? Hmm, no, I don't remember ever receiving anything of the sort from Gus. But he did give me a fine desk that once belonged to him. I'm at home. Maybe it holds... or er, it's at home. Maybe it holds some kind of clue. The Baron's desk, you say? Excellent. Would you like to come over to my house and take a look at it? You are most gracious. If you'd be kind enough to allow us to look at it, we would be very grateful. I'm sure Gus wouldn't mind two fine puzzle lovers such as yourselves looking over his desk. Hmm. Actually, let me impart a few pearls of wisdom on you while I've got your attention. Focusing on your case is all well and good, but if you don't solve some puzzles, you'll be sorry later. So make an effort to find puzzles around town and just solve the ones you can. Take it from this old timer. It's good to stop and smell the puzzles sometimes. <laughs> it's good to stop and smell the puzzles. I love it. And I think we've done a pretty good job of doing that. I think, at this point, we've solved 80. I mean, when we, when there was a story check of needing to have solved 30, we had already solved over 50. So I do think we're doing a pretty good job. Um, and we didn't have any leftover from last chapter, so... Alright, I'll get off my high horse now. Let's head on over to my house. Follow me. This is Gus's old desk. Take all the time you need to examine it. How nice of him to allow us to do this. I mean, you'd imagine more self-interested people, selfish people, would uh, would hear that they're, they potentially have the key to finding this golden apple that holds the key to all of the Baron's fortune, which is presumably a lot, and uh, would investigate it themselves before turning to the help of, you know, somebody like Leighton. But regardless, splendid. Luke, let's get right to it. Presumably it's going to be locked with a puzzle of some sort. Um, interesting. It's interesting that the game indicates, like, oh, you should be really trying to get all these puzzles. I think we've done a pretty good job of finding what we can. I don't know how many puzzles there are in the game. Uh, I guess maybe I'll ask you guys if, if you think I'm at a good pace. I don't think there are any puzzles that are truly missable, um, but I don't want to regret it later on. Look, Professor, there's a hidden puzzle here. I want to make sure. I don't know if we'll be able to revisit this room again. Right? So, so I definitely want to make sure we try to get all the puzzles we can in here. 
Anyways, in front of you are four tangled lengths of rope. Mark the ones you think will form a knot when you grab them by their ends and pull them taut. Wow. So this is, um, this is pretty tough. When looking at it, there are only a few points at which these change. So, oh man, again, I can't draw. <laughs> um, but you'll notice there, there are some loops that are either over or under different parts of the chord. Let's take a look at A first. So A wraps around one of the ends and then goes around the other. Wow, this is, this is actually pretty tough to visualize, admittedly. Um, I want to be able to sort of like quantify it, you know? Uh, I get the impression that A will form a knot. And the general principle I'm using is if you were to pull one of the ends, are you going to fasten one end of the earlier string around another part of it? And that's what I'm seeing with A. If you pull that right end, you'll start pulling, you'll start pulling. Part of it will come out, but the end you're pulling on will have that little loop fasten around it. So I think A would actually form a knot. I'm gonna go with that for now. Let's look at B. If we pull on B, that will not form a knot. For sure. Because when you pull on it, you're not tightening the rope, or the string, uh, or the rope, it is rope. <laughs> um, you're not tightening the rope around any other part of the rope at any given point. So that would not. Now let's look at C. C looks relatively complex as well, but that appears to be a knot as well. As you pull on that right end, you're fastening that first loop around another aspect of the, the string. And even if you were to pull further on that, you would be fastening around the, the right end of it. So I do think C would make a knot as well. Now let's take a look at D. D does not appear to make a loop. Or does not appear to make a knot. If you were to pull on that right end, um, I guess another way to think about it is, could you just by rotating or manipulating the loops untangle them, right? And if you were to take the right end of D and just move it down a little bit, First of all, it's no longer underneath that other little, I guess, bend. And then that bend could literally just be rotated a little bit or pulled um, from underneath the rope it's currently lying underneath, and it would be straight. So D would not. Yeah, so it's not B. It's not B and it's not D, for sure. So it's either A or C, or both A and C. Um, or not either, <laughs> or neither A nor C. Um, but I'm pretty confident that those ones are the knots. And in general, the knots are more complex when looking at them. It's easier to tell whether something, when something is not a knot as opposed to when it is. It's tough to convince yourself something is. Um, but I do think that that's the case, that as you pull on these ends, you're going to fasten segments of the rope around other segments. And with just some, you know, relatively, um, you can't untangle them very easily. Or you can't do so just by manipulating the, uh, the ropes themselves. Although, let me, let me look at A. So, when you look at A, right, there's kind of like a, like a left loop and a right loop. 
when you follow A from the left bead or whatever, the end of the rope, you follow along and then it passes under a piece of rope. The piece of rope that it's passing under forms a nice little kind of loop over both ends of the, of the rope. What would happen if you took that loop and moved it to the left over the other loop? That's what I'm thinking about now. Would that, would that untangle it per se? And I'm thinking it actually might. It actually might. But I don't know a hundred percent. A is A I'm on the fence about. <laughs> a I'm on the fence about. Hmm. Let's see. Although, even then, so <laughs> it's requiring some real spatial reasoning here. And again, can I draw? No, I can't. I wish they would just let me draw more frequently. <laughs> um, if I were to move that, that loop I mentioned to, I referred to earlier, and move it over the loop on the left so that it's sitting to the left of it, and then were to pull on both sides, what would happen? Well, Part of the loop would go over the string, and part of it would be going under. So I think we'd still get a knot. I think we would still get a knot. I think I'm gonna submit this. I don't see myself being able show? to really think about it much more. Oh no! Okay, then I'm it's probably so not a. Embarrassed. Take a look. Take a good look at each rope. What a what a hint. Um, how many pick rats did we lose from that? Just five at least. Okay, so it's probably not a. Then. It's probably just C. Um, I was trying to think like spatially, like how could I how could I work with this? Um, but it was a little bit too tough to work with without being able to draw again. <laughs> um, so I think it's just C then. So we'll try that. I think I've got it. All right. I did it. Yes. Okay. Still feel pretty good about that one. Um, yeah, the only thing I wish is I could have drawn. <laughs> that would have made, I guess, thinking about them a little bit more, a little bit easier. You could draw them in different states, right? After you manipulate them in a particular way, you could redraw it and then think about it again. But, whew, that puzzle was no pushover. Okay, um, anything else in this room? Well, there's a hint coin up here. Thank you, Robo Pupper. There's the desk, of course. Anything in the vase of flowers? No. We'll chat with our friend here, see if he has any puzzles while we're waiting in the meantime. Can't really be finished so soon, can you? No? Okay. Alright, then let's take a look at the desk. And see what it has to offer. Quite a bit, it seems. What lovely craftsmanship. Um, the letter appears to have been left unfinished. These books look very long. What a nice hourglass, a hint coin, lovely. All right, yeah, so naturally it's the drawers we're, we're curious about. And they'll presumably be locked, or no, there's nothing in here. Let's look someplace else. All right, how about the right drawer? Ah, uh, yes. It seems to be a note. It may point us in the direction of the golden apple. What do you make of this X? This is so interesting. I'm shocked that we didn't have to solve a puzzle to uh, 
to open the drawer. Hmm. Afraid I just don't know at the moment. Ooh. So we've completed chapter five now. Sorry to interrupt you, but I just received a call for you from the innkeeper, Beatrice. It seems she's concerned about one of her lodgers, and she'd like your thoughts on the problem. Well, we'd best go help her. Thank you, Archibald. Now off to the inn we go, Luke. All right, to the li to the inn we go then. Um, I guess the room has reset because we technically finished the chapter. Is there anything more to investigate in here? I don't think so. Does Archibald have a puzzle for us? Can't really be finished so soon, can you? Oh, he must be kind of stuck on that dialogue then. Um. I mean, we're going to the inn to talk to Beatrice, but maybe the cat has another puzzle for us? There sure don't seem to be a lot of animals around town. You're quite the animal lover, aren't you, Luke? Now come along, we don't have time to sit here and play around. Oh, so I guess I guess the puzzles haven't completely reset yet. Andrew's really nice, but she sometimes comes up with tough puzzles. Yeah, we also haven't been told, right, um, that we're missing out on a particular... Is this the inn here? Or is it back here? I think it's back here. Yeah, this is where the inn is. Okay, so let's let's chat with her. Although, there's a hint coin to be had, so now we'll go into the inn. Beatrice was missing earlier, wasn't she? We thought she was maybe baking some bread, right? Welcome back, Professor. I've been so looking forward to your return. Thank you. Was there something you wished to discuss with me? Oh my, yes. Listen to this. One of the guests here just performed a doze and dash routine on me. The man's gone and so are all his things. I'd like you to bring him back. I am a businesswoman, after all. How can I run a business with scoundrels skipping out on the bill like this? Yikes, so now Leighton is not only the detective, um, and just the overall, you know, professor, uh, he's now the police as well. <laughs> Would you mind if I looked around the man's room? Please do, look at it all you want. Here, I'll show you in. Yikes. Yuck. This is pretty gross. What an absolute pigsty. This whole place stinks of smoke, and there's trash everywhere. Beatrice, can you describe this guest's appearance for me? Well... <laughs> he had a sharp mustache, and it was pretty clear he wasn't from around here. That was obvious. Mustache. Reeks of smoke. I mean, he definitely looks like that uh, suspicious figure we saw, I think, in Chapter 1 or 2. Oh, do you suppose she'd be talking about Inspector Chelmy? Inspector Chelmy, isn't he the self-important windbag who's been up at Reinhold Manor? No, that's not him. The man who stayed here just looks so much more... Evil. <laughs> he was wearing a long trench coat. I'm sure you know the type. Oh, where could he have run off to? Sorry to ask this, Professor, but would you be darling and find the thief who skipped out on his bill? And is that the introdu introduction to Chapter 6? Can we go up to the room? Is there anything to find up there? Can we, uh, investigate the room, or... What? Can I also not find this coin? Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to take a look around, see if there were any puzzles. Counting on you to catch the no-good fiend who skipped out on his bill. Okay. I guess that's all there is to it. Be a darling and find that bill-dodging thief. Honestly, how are we ever going to make progress on our search for the golden apple? Things aren't looking good. No one knows anything about the item in question, and we have no leads. I'm beginning to wonder if this golden apple that everyone is in a flap over even exists. Oh, Luke. Patience is a virtue. Now, Luke, I wouldn't say we're without any leads. Think, my boy, there's a place in St. Mysterio that every villager has warned us to stay away from. What do you mean? The tower. The tower, Luke. No matter who we ask, no one seems to know a thing about the place. But suppose for a moment that the tower has something to do with the golden apple. Then it follows that the people of St. Mysterio, scared to draw near the tower, wouldn't know anything. Of course, we need to investigate that tower. The tower marks the far northern border of St. Mysterio. Let's search the road north of the market for a route to the tower. Ooh. The elusive tower. Search the village for a path to the tower. Ooh, I'm excited. Are we finally going to head to the tower? Sure, we'll, we'll save our progress. I'm, I'm very excited. I want to head to that tower as quickly as I can. <laughs> oh, and the music changed too. Alright, so it seems now we have started chapter 6, we have a whole, uh, I don't know, a deluge of puzzles to solve. And it seems they're increasing in difficulty as well. Um, they've been quite enjoyable this past episode. And we now have not only this guy who's running around abducting people, potentially making models for the Baron in the past, and I guess 
replacing people or something like that. And now we also have this evil figure, and we don't know if they're the same, if they're different, and if they're different, what their motives are, and how does it all come together to solve all of the mysteries we've observed up until this point. I'm really eager to find out more, and I hope you guys are too. But of course, we're going to continue our investigation in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, I, like I said, I, I did. <laughs> I just want to know, am I on track to get all the puzzles? I know they do a good job of in between chapters letting you know if there are any that have been left over. Um, they'll be added to Granny Riddleton's. And I don't think we've had any added to Granny Riddleton's for a couple chapters now, so I think we're doing a pretty decent job of exploring and solving what we can. Um, I think we're only a few, you know, painting scraps away from being able to solve that. Uh, we've got quite a bit of furniture as well, so... Um, we can always try to rearrange those rooms to do whatever that need, whatever that's relevant for, um, eventually. And and like I said, overall the puzzles have been fun. There have been a few here and there that haven't that haven't been that great. Um, there's only been one that I truly haven't been able to solve, but I do I guess fundamentally disagree with uh, the solution. Um, but aside from that, I'm loving talking to the characters too, the music, everything, and. And like I said, I hope you guys are looking forward to the next episode. But until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.